meet you. Yeah, uh, I'm James Chikumabuna, the Vice Chancellor of the State University of Medical and Applied Sciences. It's a pleasure. Uh, can you give us an insight into the uh, the uh, what is expected that this University of Medical and Applied Sciences will achieve? Uh, the role it's expected to play uh, in the educational uh, community of Nigeria. Well, um, I think the uh, establishment of this uh, university was based on the fact that um, in any state, for instance, we have uh, two uh, government and uh, universities, namely the University of Nigeria and Soka, and then the Inugu State University of uh, Science and Technology. And every year, uh, the number of applicants you know, uh, to these universities to study medicine and the uh, allied uh, health sciences are so many that. Uh, in most cases, less than 10% of the people who applied uh, get admission into these uh, universities. And then at the same time, we know that uh, we have acute shortage of uh, medical personnel in Nigeria. And even the few that are there, many of them are now living, uh, going outside the country, Britain, uh, Canada, US, uh, to work. So there's an urgent need to increase medical education, you know, opportunities for them, some of these people who are very, very eager to study. And I think it is based on that that the His Excellency, the Governor of the uh, State, decided to uh, establish this uh, University of uh, Medical and Applied Sciences. So it is uh, actually meant to fill the gap and provide uh, more opportunities for uh, uh, the indigenous of uh, in, and even Nigeria as a whole to study medicine and the uh, and the applied sciences. When we talk of applied sciences, you know that uh, uh, in the uh, first year, for instance, in the medical uh, profession, all of them are usually uh, uh, concept, uh, you know, spend one year in basic sciences, uh, you know, studying physics, chemistry, biology, and the general studies. So it becomes uh, imperative that if we have to amount, uh, uh, instead of just uh, providing teachers to, to just teach biology and live, that is good to also have uh, programs uh, so to effective utilization of those standards that will be applied there. And then um, also applied sciences, uh, uh, generally engineering, you know, the importance of engineering kind of uh, besides the development, national development. And because of that, something like biomedical engineering, uh, you know, we also mounting a program uh, there and then other engineering courses that are equally very, very crucial and then uh, for national development. So that is uh, that is it. Uh, uh, there's a major concept in the, the, the major reasons why uh, this uh, university was established. Uh, it seems this it's uh, this is a specialized institution yeah. because uh, uh, for most, most universities and tertiary institutions, we see they have an open door policy on what they offer. But uh, medical and applied sciences, uh, does it mean that we'll be have, looking to have more specialized uh, graduates uh, coming up from this institution in those regards? Yeah. Um, uh, if you look around, um, the emphasis is on medical sciences. Okay. And then uh, before this uh, university was opened, the you have uh, this uh, spe uh, special hospital, uh, that's the, the white building that is there, which is a 120 capacity in a bed in a specific hospital. Mm -hmm. And that is fully equipped to uh, provide not just the primary, but even secondary and even tertiary uh, healthcare services. You have a scanning machine, you have a ultrasound, you have a, um, dialysis uh, machines, and they are it's well, well equipped. And then, if you also look behind, you see the other, you see the teaching hospital with seven departments you know, that is almost completed. Then you have modern child hospital that is also the, that is the, the building that is not uh, completed. So you have uh, three uh, important health uh, you know, uh, hospitals within the premises. 
that is that is it. So we are going to uh, you know, uh, key into those, uh, you know, uh, especially hospitals. So the training is not going to be a problem. Also, in terms of the community, because uh, you know, we need to train our medical doctors, we also they need to also go to the area to have the uh, experience with the, you know, the, the, the uh, conventional hospitals. Uh, in Uguzi, uh, you know, uh, Jela Hospital is very close, the largest in uh, in Uguzi State, and it is just uh, very close to this place. So uh, uh, we have uh, the one is that the, the, the health institutions where these people who are not going to get the training. Uh, there are many you know, around this place, so it's, it's going to offer the needs. And then, uh, as a special hospital, uh, what we have done is, you know, what are the key things that are needed in the present day uh, university systems. Uh, one of them is uh, the internet facilities. Um, uh, we have invested a lot in the internet facilities. We have uh, the, the cable, you know, not just uh, the radio, but cables. If you go to any office, you have the, you know, the all cabled, you know, so that uh, people will have very fast and stable internet uh, facilities. Behind there, you see our data center. If you go to that data center, you see that there. Uh, have enough gadgets for that. So all the offices are cabled, all the uh, hostess, uh, hostess are cabled, and they would be very uh, fast internet uh, facilities. Uh, even the, you see the, the quadrant group here where they, that was on bed yesterday and opened the space also, that is going to also have solar light and the, with the charging ports and the internet facilities so the students can also stay there to you know, relax and then at the same time surf and then Data access to internet facilities. So we 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 are we are, we are uh, geared towards providing very very high quality education, which is what is not just the quantity but the quality is what is very crucial. Crucial, and we are geared towards that. Okay, uh, can you give us an insight into the capacity of uh, the university uh, in terms of intake? Okay. Yeah, presently we uh, the quota because uh, is a thousand one hundred and fifty, you know, because because uh, uh, the we uh, twenty three programs we presented twenty three programs and all of them we are you know uh, uh, scheduled in such verification and we are uh, permitted to admit students into those and then they said that uh, for any new university we are going to uh, that uh, the marks the maximum they can give is 50 pay program. So the 50 into 23 will give you 8,150. Uh, but that is that is for the first year. Uh, you, you have gone to the lab, you see that uh, uh, we have a capacity to take much more. There's no, none of our classrooms that will not take more than 100. You know. The auditorium, you know, uh, lecture auditorium, which you have six of them, each of them has the capacity of uh, over 300 uh, sitting capacity. Our laboratories and all this, so we definitely have. A, we made a case. We wanted to see whether we can even increase, but we are told that that's now their policy. First year, take fifty. Then by the time they come again, uh, we are looking forward to uh, having an increased quota in some of these uh, special uh, uh, programs. Okay, you mentioned twenty-two disciplines. Twenty-three. Yeah. Okay. Can you list some of them? Stephen? Yeah, um, the 23 uh, programs. Uh, the uh, you have medicine and surgery is there. Then we have uh, pharmacy uh, in the faculty of pharmacy. Then for the uh, basic medical sciences, we have uh, human physiology and human anatomy. Then for the um, faculty of uh, health science, health, uh, health uh, and life sciences, we have the geography. And they do physics. We have physiotherapy. We have uh, a nursing science. We have med, med lab. We have uh, nutrition and dietetics. Uh, then for the faculty of uh, natural and applied sciences, we have information and uh, in, uh, uh, <coughs> communication technology. We have computer sciences. Uh, we have uh, computer science. We have uh, uh, genetics and biotechnology. We have microbiology and brew, applied microbiology and brew, we have biochemistry. Uh, these are the programs uh, in the natural uh, and applied sciences. Then in the faculty of uh, engineering and built environment, there we have biomedical engineering. 
we have computer engineering, we have civil engineering, we have mechanical engineering, we have electrical uh, electronic engineering, and then we, I think I've mentioned the civil engineering. Then we have architecture, and we also have a quantity survey. So these are the, the, the programs that uh, we are mounting. All right, uh, as uh, a university of medical and applied sciences, we know that uh, applied, so laboratories are key. Uh, in that regard, uh, what can you say concerning your infrastructural capacity and equipment when it comes to laboratories? Yeah, I, I think uh, I, can, I can smile in the audience and say yes. Uh, we have a total of 25 huge lab like this across the six faculties. And then uh, if you, when that they are, not that we are built to test, it's not just a lab that you build with the highest standard. They are well equipped uh, for teaching, especially the teaching equipment. We have uh, all the teaching equipment that we have required. Uh, there are some other uh, like research equipment, which uh, we are procuring, but uh, uh, we're going to adopt the, the, the model of having a central laboratory where we can pull those uh, very expensive equipment together and then use them for research. But for the teaching, we are ready to, uh, to go with uh, this. We have, they are well equipped. Uh, I, can, I can say with all of the amount of this that any person who comes and sees the laboratories we have and the equipment we have, we uh, agree with me that. Uh, we, we are going to emphasize practical training, not just the theoretical training. Okay. What are the classrooms? The I classrooms are, yeah. Yes, another thing is with the classroom. That's one thing that is the classroom. We have decided to use smart interactive blackboard, you know, boards, okay. uh, or two. Um, in all the classes? In all the classes. In all the classes. You, if you go, you have seen them. And why do we want to do that? You know, One is that with those boards, uh, the electronic boards, uh, they are smart. That means uh, whatever you write there is stored. You can store them. And then at the end of the lecture, uh, and then also whatever you say, they are recorded. So we record and we store what you have written in the board. And this means that after that, this thing, uh, they both the voice and the written documents, they are uploaded into the student portal. The student can access them. So the students can, you know, do it for any reason you miss lecture, you can, even if, even if you have gone to this, you can listen to it over and over again. And that is, can be one of the easiest ways of revision. Um, we are not encouraging laziness, but uh, so many students these days find it more difficult, more easier to listen to something than to sit down and read. And if you have them, it means that uh, even while they are traveling, they, they can be listening to the lectures, and, and I think that, that that is very, very distant. And also, we are going to, as a policy, any person who is going to teach here must upload the lecture notes uh, to in, in, in our portal. And that is also very, very uh, important. So we, before you start teaching, we, we enforce you uh, that uh, you must have to upload your lecture notes. So with the lecture notes and with what you have this or some further, that means that the lecture materials are, are available to the students. And the advantage is not just to the student, it also helps out, you know, in the kind of uh, quality control. Because if a, if a staff knows that, the teacher knows that whatever he's saying and teaching in the class is being recorded, and that can be, you know, any other person can listen to it, he has to, he has to prepare. Because if you don't, if you don't teach well or something, we can call you to order and say, look. And then, of course, even if you don't, uh, it's not just all about the punishment. But uh, uh, if uh, you, you say something that is, uh, you, you teach wrong information, and then everybody said, but you, you are selling yourself. So that also helps us to uh, ensure that the teacher, before you go to the class to teach, you should be prepared. You should make sure that you are teaching and communicating very well. Okay, um, we know as a, as a tertiary institution, libraries are very important. Yeah. And I believe that you, you have a, a library in this uh, yeah. uh, area, vicinity. How equipped is it? Yeah, the library is also, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, the, our emphasis has been on electronic library. Uh, we have access for we have access you know, to uh, electronic information, so to uh, you know, software, you know, 
copies of books, you know, journals, and all the necessary so we have uh, subscribed to them. And because of that, uh, we, the students, as I said, we emphasize the issue of uh, uh, IT, so they, you can get this. But we also have, uh, 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 you, you, if you go there, you see uh, two large uh, reading uh, rooms for the library, each of them uh, also about uh, 300, for, uh, 300 uh, sitting capacity for reading. And the hard books, the textbooks, yeah, they are, um, I can't say, I, I, I cannot say we have enough now. We, we are gradually building up our library because it's not a decent. And then the, uh, one of the things we are we concerned is the kind of, uh, um, the, we have some of these textbooks that are old, but very, very important for fundamental uh, in the, uh, uh, information and there that are required. But currency is also very, very important. So to have a balance of having those ones that are give, giving you the core uh, for, uh, fund, uh, knowledge and then those ones that are actually revised. So we are building the, the hard copy. But for the electronics one, we, we are more than the, 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 the sufficient for that to go. Then the main library building, the His Excellency, you know, the, 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 the foundation is there. Uh, we believe that uh, within a few days we should be able to build a, a, an independent library. All right. Uh, well, as we expect uh, students to make adequate use of this state of the art institution, we know they would have to stay somewhere. Yeah. So, what uh, arrangements? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think. Yeah, the, the, the hostel is also something that we can boast of. Okay. We have uh, two hostels, one for male, one for female. Each of them, uh, 450 best spaces. And uh, very comfortable places. Uh, the toilets will have uh, two, two student paper toilets, which is, uh, that makes that uh, they have to take responsibility to clean the toilet. It's not a question of that. Uh, and then uh, we, we, have, we have developed also the guideline to stay there in uh, if, 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 if you mess your own toilet up, uh, you know, you'll be kicked out of the hostel. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, well, so and then, yeah, the yeah, the, so, and then we have uh, uh, four restaurants uh, in each of the hostels, you know, two downstairs, two upstairs. And then that, and they are managed by different uh, catering, you know, caterers. Yeah, so that the, makes for competition. So okay. they have to compete. We have discussed with them We've agreed on the quality they bought. You know, they, we have to taste to see the quality of food they are going to serve. And the price, what is also very, very important. So they have to be affordable to students. Okay, and, and Professor, you, you know, over the years, we usually see student protests concerning uh, water, lights, carrying buckets. All we are saying, <laughs> give us yes. light, give us water. Yeah. Have you? Yes, yeah, that is this. That we have dedicated boreholes to the hostess. Here in the campus, we have 10 industrial boreholes. Each faculty building has a borehole. And we have six of them. If you look at you see the overhead tank. Each of the hostess have a borehole, which is dedicated. And that means that uh, water will not be a problem. Water will not be a problem. Even if one of them packs up, because as I said, there are 10 of them within the campus. And even if for any reason any of them they will fought, there is no way 10 bubbles will they will fought at the same time. So we can say they have access to water. And that includes the one that is, you know, uh, born for the villagers, you know, have the other, which is solar powered. Okay. That means, you know, every day, once there's light, the water is flowing there. If you go outside, you see them fetching there. That's it. So, so that, is, that, is, that is it. Then for light, again, we have installed solar light in the two buildings. That means 24 hours of light is guaranteed. Uh, each of them will have a 20 kV uh, you know, uh, solar panel and inverters in the installed into your buildings. Uh, we decided, it's expensive, but we decided to take that option because uh, the cost of diesel is now very, very expensive. You know, it's, it's no more easy to run diesel uh, generators. And the light is also not... Uh, we are in Nigeria, so we cannot see... cannot depend on the uh, the national grid, you know, because of the... You know, but with the solar light, uh, the digital solar kind of, we are also sure that the students are given uh, 24 hours of uh, light, and that is also very really good. 
Okay, well, World of Training, an instance where they have to do a certain assignment online. Uh, do they need to come? No, yeah, that is also the, the, the hostess are also cabled. That's a, if you go there, you also have the cable. We spent a lot of money on the cable. You know, we had the cabling from the uh, upper junction, you know, up to this. And then all the buildings here, you have terminated, uh, you know, we terminated the, uh, the, the, the fibers into each of them. Uh, because you see, radios, we also have different, but radio, when you use radio to distribute uh, light, usually you have some dark spots. That's why, for instance, in some universities, uh, you see students clustering one place uh, to looking for uh, uh, access to the internet uh, because you have so many dark spots. Here, because of the cabling, under any building you go, you have very strong, stable signal. Because for, you, for, internet. for the internet. So, hostels, the same thing. If you go to the hostel, look at it. Because uh, most of the rooms, some of the rooms in the hostel, we didn't have the direct cable because of, uh, and then the radio from outside will not work because of the concrete walls. So, because of that, the radios are inside. We have 10 radios in each of the ones. And that means that uh, anywhere you are, uh, you get access to internet. So uh, th- that's also one of the things. And, and I said that our uh, w- website is also robust. You know, we, are, we, we have a, a situation where well. the parents and what have access to information of their world in the portal. So, and every week, we, the attendance is uploaded. Okay. If we have a quiz, it is uploaded. So you as a parent can log into the portal. You can only have access to your own world, not to everything. And then if your world has left and say he's in the school and you find out that throughout the week he didn't attend the lecture, it is your responsibility to ask him, look, what are you doing? I, you didn't attend the lecture. Or if you have performed very badly, you say, what, is, what are you doing in the school? Why are you not doing well? And that helps because what Vietnam has experienced is that sometimes... The world, you know, we've had a situation where the father will come and say, I, I'm not even sure if the son is still in the school and all this. And all. It is, in secondary school, teachers teach, you know, you know, punish the students and they call them to order. In the university, they are regarded as adults. Being an adult also goes with the responsibility. And so it is good, if, you, if it's good that the parents should know whether their kids are doing well before it is late. Because some of them, you know, those are people, students who overstay, you know, and some of them never get they graduate. It's just that the parents don't even know that. You know, by the time they started, you know, the way uh, the parents never knew. But now that you as a father, you as a world, can access the information, know when you are a student, uh, you are, you are, your child is attending lecture or not attending lecture, know that he's not doing well in the test. You, you also call him to order so that before it is too late, uh, you know, uh, so th- these are the, some of the things we want to do so that parents should be involved in terms of moral, in terms of addressing the students, in terms of calling them to order to study hard and all these things. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Also, even the fees also, okay. when the students have paid the fees, okay. it is also in the internet. So sometimes you also have a problem where you give your child a, a school fees and he doesn't pay. So if you have given your child a school fees, you would look, log into it and say, if he has not paid it, before he, he eats the money, you call him and say, look, my friend, you have not paid. And I... <laughs> so so these, are, these, are, these are some of the innovations that yeah. we, we are going to introduce into this university to ensure that we give education, we give quality education to the students. Okay. Uh, so finally, well, we know the health of the students will be taken care of due to the uh, the equipment and the infrastructure yeah. we have in the hospital. Yeah. So let, let's uh, cap it up with the hospital. Can you give us an insight into what type of equipment that can be found there? Uh, yeah, the, well, for the, the basic things, as I said, the, for primary health, uh, yeah, that is a normal. We, we have lab. If you go there, we have a very good diagnostic lab. And that is also one of the places we want to tap into. That we have a very good lab, laboratory for testing of a common distance of that. That's it. Number one is, as I said, that this is a you know, scanning machine, uh, ultrasound, and th- those equipment are there. As I said, they were built as a specialist hospital before 
we ferreted it as our uh, medical center. So we have that. And also the students, the care teachers, we are also going to enforce it. Once you come in, you have to register, you have to pay, I think you pay about 500 million. I'm not sure of the amount of them. And that also means that you will pay you know, little or nothing for your, uh, you know, when you get sick. Uh, that, that is also very, very important. And uh, as I said, just beside the teaching hospital, this is the teaching hospital also, which I believe is also going to be a teaching hospital, is a teaching hospital. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think, uh, uh, and uh, they, they, they will be open to the public, not just the students. You know, you know, people from outside are free to come uh, for the medical uh, you know, services. And we are sure that we this. If you see behind it, we will have, because of the specialist uh, nature of the hospital, so we have a helipad. Or helicopters, yes, you see, you see it already developed, so that in case of emergencies, okay. uh, we are, we are looking forward to a, a situation where we are just as a specialist hospital, people can be flown in from uh, any place, and they will have a, a place where they can cover and land. And if you have a need to also, uh, you know, transfer a, a patient you know, to another hospital in emergency case, we have a help on there. So uh, I think the, the, the concept is very, very disastrous. And I think uh, um, this place, not just for the education, but also for providing health care services, uh, uh, we are going to be in highly specialized. Thank you so much, uh, Professor. So in a nutshell, if you were to speak to the general public, what would you tell them about this great... Yeah, um, first of all, uh, I would tell them to uh, those... Uh, who, that have not come. You know, when we talk about, you know, usually when a new university is starting, people are skeptical. Are we sure they are this or not? And I want them to come and look around the campus, get to their labs, get to the classrooms that we have talked about, and be convinced that we have all it takes in terms of infrastructure. And for this, we are even grateful to the governor who has spent so much money and is still spending a lot of money to the university. We want to tell the public that you have all it takes to give the highest level of quality in education that the world can be taken about. In terms of staffing, you know, we, 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 we are recruiting now, and there are so many you know, in terms of academia because I insist on recruiting only those who are qualified. We, we conduct interview, very rigorous interview, and to a very large extent, must be based on meritocracy. Those who those who have employed and those who, are, who have been employed, those who have entered an interview, know that it is not a joke that you have to shoot for it. Even in our advertisement, you know, if you want to become an assistant lecturer, you, you must have a two one, and you must have a, a, at least four points in the master's degree. If you are not, if you don't have this, you are not even qualified to be uh, to be interviewed. And that that it is in the newspaper, and we have been maintaining it, and we have enough. For the non-academic staff, we have over 6,000 applications. And the first of all is that they have to take an exam, have the CBT exam. With the CBT exam, we are going to reduce the number significantly. So that if you are employing anybody, we are sure that you are ready to do it. Because um, the uh, infrastructure does not make an university. The manpower, the personnel is what is very, very important. So we, we are the critics. And we're also very lucky. We're very close to the University of Nigeria and Soka. We have the system. Many of them are willing to even come and teach on part-time basis and all this. So in terms of uh, human resources, uh, I'm also very confident that we have capable hands to teach our students. Thank you so much, uh, Professor. And we hope that a few years from now we'll be here for some anniversary celebrations. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, some other special uh, ceremonies, which we are sure the university will attract to itself. Yeah, we we, we are looking forward to that. And then, um, as I said, uh, it's not easy to start a new university. We are starting from the listen. It's a lot of challenges in terms of, uh, especially when you want to do things differently. Um, uh, it's, it's a lot of stress on me. A lot of people who just think, oh, is your brother, then therefore give a job, whether the person knows it or not, or so the ability to resist, so many things. But um, there's also an advantage there. The advantage there is that 
we have a clean slate to write on. Uh, it is difficult sometimes when people have already made up their mind of what it is. It is difficult to correct in, you know, the, it's a tradition and all to change. If you want to change a policy, sometimes you have resistance. But now that you are giving it, we are starting from this. We set a standard and we stick to that standard so that any person who is coming, the student who is coming, already knows that this is how we do it. If we are employing you, when you come, we tell you this is what you are going to do. This is the condition. You like it, you take. If you don't like, you leave. We uh, uh, so th th these are the issues. But the challenges are there. Uh, we're taking it gradually, and then uh, we are praying that God continues to give us the grace, the, the knowledge, and the power and the wisdom uh, to succeed. But I am determined to succeed. I'm determined to succeed. I'm determined to make a difference. By the time we continue to teach and all these things, I'm sure that. Uh, uh, people will come, people will. It's not a question of saying, I'm going to do that. They will see it being done. And that is, will be much more convincing to them that uh, uh, SOMAS has come to make a difference in the education sector. Thank you so much, Shanda. We wish you the best of luck Thank and you. we wish SOMAS the best of luck. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah, bye.